everyone. Good afternoon. And welcome to another Facebook Live. Um, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Sophia and I'm a psychologist and I'm the SCN um, coordinator at International Sharing School Tagsparku. Hopefully, um, everyone is staying safe and healthy um, and staying safe and healthy while things are gradually getting back to, to normal. Um, we've started, we're very excited to say that uh, we've started to slowly welcome back some of our students back. We've opened um, our school doors for our youngest uh, students, our babies. Uh, so they've started this week. Um, and uh, we will be welcoming back as well our nursery, our kindergarten, and our reception students on June 1st. So very, very excited about that. Uh, and we're working very, very hard to guarantee all the safety uh, and hygiene measures and guidelines are, are in place. So everyone stays safe, um, stays healthy and ultimately stays very, very happy because that's how we like our students uh, and our families happy. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And hopefully um, we will be able to all get back together as soon as, as possible. So with that being said, um, today uh, I bring you a new topic and the topic is mindfulness. So I've prepared a small presentation uh, about this topic. So I would like to start by, by explaining why we thought that mindfulness could be a good idea to present. Uh, we do believe it's a very helpful tool during these stressful times because obviously, although we are gradually getting back to normal and starting to do things normally, um, these are still uh, unexpected times uh, and stressful times, obviously. And also because we believe that mindfulness is a practice that is accessible and beneficial to people of all ages, and it does not require. Um, most of the times any materials. So all you need is a little time and access to your own mind and your own body. Um, what is mindfulness? Uh, what do we believe or how do we describe mindfulness? Um, mindfulness is an awareness state that comes through paying purposeful attention in the present moment and experiencing it as it happens. It is intentionally bringing one's awareness to the present moment without any judgment. Um, it can be described as the practice of paying attention in the present moment and doing it intentionally with no judgment. Mindfulness, med mindfulness meditation practices refer to the deliberate acts of regulating um, attention through the observation of thoughts, emotions, and body states. Um, some typical mindfulness activities uh, can include, um, for example, um, mindful awareness of breathing, of your body, of your feelings, your emotions, and even your thoughts. Um, another uh, activity can be mindful walking meditation, which is my personal favorite, um, mindful eating, mindful body scan, and listening. So you've heard me say the word mindfulness, but you've also heard me say the word meditation. What is the difference between the two of them? Um, we all know the well-established benefits of meditation. We know that it lowers um, the levels of the stress hormone, which you know is cortisol. Um, it enhances the immune response. It also lifts up our mood. It helps us recover more quickly from stressful situations and also it sharpens our focus. Um, practicing meditation does not mean um, does not mean that um, we experience fewer distractions. 
Um, scientific data suggests that we do not have fewer distractions, but we can handle them better. Some studies show through brain imaging that while people meditate, we can see, it is visible to see four basic moves. Being the first of them, the first of them, you focusing on one particular thing. So saying, for example, you're breathing. Um, the second being your mind wandering off. The third, you noticing that it wandered off. And the fourth, you being able to shift your attention back to the one thing you were focusing on before. This happens over and over again, uh, and it repeats itself for as long as you would like. It turns out that these simple movements um, of the mind strengthens your connection among the brain circuits, which helps con concentration. The more you practice, the stronger the connections become. So the idea is not to stop your mind from wandering, but it is. Um, the, the point is to be mindful um, of this uh, wandering and to be able to shift back to where you want. On the other hand, mindfulness refers to that specific move where you notice that your mind wandered off and shifted back. With mindfulness, you monitor whatever goes on within your mind. And with meditation, you, it means the whole class of training your attention. So we can say that mindfulness is among those, among those ways and um, it's included in the meditation process. Some meditation methods just have to be mindful of whatever goes on within your mind. So thoughts, feelings, fantasies, anything you can think of without any judging or without reacting. This self-awareness in itself tends to quiet the mind. But in contrast, in contrast many meditation methods are concentrative. You continually bring your mind back to that one point of focus that you were concentrating in before. Concentrative methods use mindfulness to notice when your mind starts to wander off and the ability to bring it back to that focus. It is important to say though that neither meditation or mindfulness will resolve your inner conflict. Um, it's not designed for that. It is a compliment, though. Psychotherapy was designed for that. Um, mindfulness and psychotherapy are different tools with different jobs, but the combination of the two is actually particularly um, powerful. This means that they complement each other very, very well. Um, with that being said, and obviously being uh, having a specific context, we are a school. Uh, so addressing mindfulness in this context uh, means understanding what it can do, for example, for our students and what we can do, for example, for our teachers. So starting with the students, um, the belief is that mindfulness um, is able to reduce stress, so improve the ability to manage stress a lot better. Um, it increases focus, so it improves the ability to pay attention and concentrate. Um, also improved emotional regulation, so reducing uh, impulsiveness and also uh, allowing for better behavior, uh, better, more positive behavior, as well as increased emotional intelligence, which is very, very important. So enhancing our conflict resolution skills. Another example of what it can do it can, uh, is uh, increased empathy and respect. Obviously here we can link it to our learner profile and the attributes, right, where we expect um, not only our students but our whole school community to be caring and respectful towards others. So increased empathy and understanding of others obviously goes hand to hand with that. Um, as well as increased resilience, so enhancing the capacity to overcome challenges, as well as dealing with frustration and overcoming it. Um, improved physical well-being, so a better engagement in physical activity, 
is because uh, mindfulness allows you to better connect and to better understand your body and listening to it. Um, and um, another example is improved creativity and um, collaboration. This is with regards to our students, um, but what can you also do for our teachers? Um, they are aligned, obviously, um, and we couldn't uh, overlook the reduced stress and the likelihood of, um, of entering a burnout state. Um, more easily managed classrooms, improved learning conditions, and positive teacher student and student teacher relationships. Um, so, for example, with students, they will find it much easier to focus and engage in the classroom. The classroom will benefit as a whole from a collective calmness. Um, and for teachers, they will spend uh, more time teaching and less time managing the classroom um, and also be better equipped to, hand to handle stressful work situations. Teachers who teach students that are practicing mindfulness will also find that students will be better mentally equipped to learn. What are the four um, steps in any mindful practice? Links back to what I was talking about before, about the four basic moves. So, first of all, you place your attention on a singular present moment experience. Um, you then notice that your mind will wander off you will start experiencing some chatting within your mind and thinking about other things. Uh, you will notice that it has wandered and you will be able to shift your attention back to the singular present moment experience that you started with. So this goes on uh, and it repeats itself for as long as you would like. What are some examples of mindfulness practice types? Um, we just um, gathered together a few examples. Obviously, the list is endless, um, but I will describe uh, a couple just for you to, to, to be aware and to know uh, what the process involves. So I'll, I'll address, for example, breathing. Um, so the most basic way to do mindful breathing is to simply focus all your attention on your breath. So the inhale and exhale process. You can do this while standing, um, but ideally you'll be you'll do you'll do it while sitting down or lying uh, lying down in a comfortable position. So focusing all your attention, concentrating on your breathing. Um, this will bring you uh, a sense of calm, inner and hopefully outer calmness, uh, which is truly beneficial for your well-being and state of mind. Another example, um, and randomly, uh, would be body scan. So this uh, body scan meditation focuses attention on physical sensations in your body. So this practice is completed by scanning one's awareness through the entire body, but on a micro level. Um, so attention is given to every inch of your body gradually. Um, and the purpose of this is to cultivate the ability to notice what is being experienced on a different parts of your body. Um, just one more example can be linked to our five uh, senses. So the senses, the mindful practice type. Um, we all know our five senses, which are the sight, the smell, the sound, the taste, and the touch. And here we focus specifically and individually on each sense, allowing yourself to truly acknowledge and recognize what you can see, smell, hear, taste, and touch. Um, these are just a few examples uh, of mindfulness practices that you can uh, do practically anywhere and at any time, and it will only take you as long as you would like. So it can take from just a few minutes to however long you wish. So that is it. Mindfulness is being present in the moment.